Hey folks, Technivers here, back again, and today we are talking about the new full version release of Kira 4.7. It is out now, it is definitely worth a check. We are going to go over some of the features, but before we jump into that, make sure you stay tuned at the end of this video to find out how you can win your very own Ender 3 version 2, courtesy of Technivorous, only here on the Technivorous channel. The Technivorous channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. Okay, so let's dive right into this. If you are in any way new to 3D printing and this is one of your first times updating Kira, you will notice when you load Kira, uh, it automatically checks for updates. So you're going to notice this little guy down here that says Ultimaker Kira 4.7 is available. Now, this is a setting that you can have set to check automatically. If you don't have it set, meaning if this doesn't show up here, what you're going to want to do is go to Preferences, Configure Kira, and you'll find the setting in here but we are going to click extensions, uh, update checker, and check for updates, and then it will do that for you. So um, we'll go ahead and close this. I've already begun the download. And here you can see the Kira site. I will have a link to the Kira download site down below in case you don't already have Kira or in case you're having trouble with the updating. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and give it permission. Now, I do have a couple versions of Kira installed already, and when it says, do you want to uninstall the old version, I'm gonna hit no. Um, this one, it says it's already installed. That's actually the beta, and yes, I'm gonna install over that. So this is gonna be the full version, um, and I'm covering the beta. That's the only thing I'll ever install over. The beta's been out for a little while, and I've been testing it, so it's been working pretty well. I don't think we're going to have any problems. I still, it's better to keep your old version in case you run into any bugs or issues that haven't been dealt with yet. So we're going to let this finish up. All right, here it is, Kira 4.7.0. Before we jump into the improvements here, there are two things that I wanted to mention. Well, one thing I wanted to mention really, when I was doing the video for the beta version of this, I had had problems dragging and dropping a model. Now, that should not actually be an issue. Uh, I haven't had it come up again since, and it turns out I've been having some memory problems with my computer. As you can see here, I'm getting a message to activate Windows, um, and I'm using Windows 10 with automatic updates. Sometimes the updates don't exactly work out the greatest. I promise you this is a legit copy of Windows, and I promise you the drag and drop function has been working in Kira. I just seem to be having some memory issues. In fact, my second monitor is still not working, which was originally an issue with Windows 10 when it first came out that you couldn't hook up a second monitor. So I don't know what the deal is, but hopefully I get it figured out and fixed pretty soon. However, it hasn't really affected my performance in Kira, which is a good sign because one of the things we're going to be looking at here, and you'll see is increase, let's see, there we go, performance improvements with multiple models. So. Um, I do have enough memory to do that without lagging out my computer, which is saying a lot because um, even when I didn't have problems before, if I loaded up the plate, I would get some issues. So we're going to like glance at this real quick. Uh, you're welcome to look at all of this stuff individually, but we're just going to kind of go over some of these settings. All right, so here I have brought in a model. Let me just real quickly show you that the drag and drop does work. It's just a little pin I was printing for a friend, a special request. So, um, and we're actually, we're going to take this, we're going to get rid of that one. The drag and drop is working fine. We are going to rotate this. Um, one of the features that they have added, and this was, I believe, Field of View that added this one, is these rotational widgets. They now have these arrows here, and what those do, uh, they will rotate by 90 degrees. So you can get an exact 90 degree turn that way. Um, so makes it easy to set this one up on a certain face or even on its base if that's what I wish. So that is pretty nice. Uh, one of the other features that they added, okay, so that is the rotation feature and it's it's it works really well on all three axes. One of the other features they added since we are talking about loading up the build plate is up here in the edit section there is now a multiply selected model button and we're gonna go ahead and do this we're gonna load up this build plate because one of the other things that they've changed that you'll notice is that there are better settings with multiple models now it does still take a second to get it refreshed but now I have 16 models on my build plate um, I have memory issues with this PC and as I said I'm not having any problems whatsoever 
uh, grabbing stuff, arranging it immediately, and things of that nature. Um, real quickly, I will point out, you'll notice this red dot down here. That is just denoting that I have one of the post-processing scripts turned on. That was a change from one of the last versions where you get that warning letting you know um, that this is going to ask for a filament change unless I take this out. So let's go ahead and just get rid of that so I don't have that red dot there. So um, yeah, so multiple models. I mean, it's still really easy to manipulate and then I can grab and I mean, it's almost instantaneous, which means that uh, the improvements they've made are really quite nice. One of the other major feature changes. Now this is something that I love and we're going to get to it in just a second. I'm going to take some of these out of here because we're going to make one and we're going to make it bigger. And scale, we'll say 500. That's good enough. And then we're going to move it over here and 90 that way. And I think that'll do because this part will have to be supported. So what we're going to look at is the tree support. So we're going to go down here to experimental and oh no it's gone well that's because they actually finally moved it to the actual support section so now if you're looking for tree support you're gonna go under support you're gonna click generate support and with it turned on you're gonna get a drop down here Oh, what did I do turned it off again you're gonna get a drop down here and it's going to give you the option of choosing uh, your support structure now the two options are now normal and tree support. So if you want tree support, you're going to select it just like that, which will change the options from your normal to your tree options. Now, there have been times when this was in experimental where I would have generate support checked for normal and tree support turned on accidentally. I never actually did it on purpose, but uh, sometimes I would wonder why my support time or my print time was so long, and it's because it was printing both kinds of support. Uh, I've wasted quite a bit of plastic doing that. So I'm glad that they changed this because I've never really had a single issue with tree support and I'm glad that it's now a full feature. All right, for this next part, I have brought in a second model and we're actually gonna switch to another printer here. So if we look at my, this is my TiVo Tarantula Pro, I'm working on a dual extruder on it right now. Um, so it does give me an option for two different colors. And if you look, both of these are this 3D Fuel custom material. The change I wanted to point out was that they made some updates to the object list and it's now showing you which extruder is which. So I'm gonna select this and change it to the second extruder. You can see that it not only changes here, but it's also denoted down here in the corner by these colored squares. Now, that being said, that is a pretty simple addition and you can see that this over here is actually taken up. It's my purge block. So don't worry about that if you don't see that. Um, and you won't see these options if you only have one extruder on your printer. So not really a big deal. Um, you can change the settings for each one individually up here, but the dual extrusion is not a new thing. Uh, if you'd like me to make a video on dual extrusion, go ahead and leave a comment down below and we'll go over some Kira settings for that. I intend to do it eventually, but uh, like I said, I'm still working on mounting the dual extruder and getting everything running properly. And then that is basically it. So we're gonna jump back over to the Ender 3. And there are a lot of other new minor things that they did. And if you'd like to see those, the full list is available by clicking on help and what's new. And it'll show you all of the things that it showed you when you first opened this version for the first time. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this. There is a couple other things I wanted to show you. I wanted to offer a valuable tip. So one of my tips that I think people overlook is that a lot of times I think it's best to obviously orient the model in the direction that you want it. Say that way there before you multiply the model. So I'm going to take this back down to 100%. And I can fit, let's see, let's try 15 fit okay. Let's try 20. That would give us 21 total. We'll see how many rows we get and see how much of it fits. Okay, so I can fit um, 21 of them comfortably and I can probably move this over here. And I can probably add one, two, three, four, five more if I do a little bit of rearranging. So that would put me at a total of 26. Um, we're gonna actually remove all of those. Now, 
this model does not have any severe overhangs on the sides. Uh, it's best to print it on its back as it is um, because these will become overhangs if I set it on this face here. Um, so if you're printing a large one, you want to put tree support in there and set this on its face, that's fine. But one of the reasons I say you should orient your models first is because if I select this face, um, since I know that, look at it from this angle, that the structure here will print these overhangs with no problem. If I wasn't worried about that inner part right there, with the model oriented in this direction, I could probably put twice as many if not three or four times as many because it's such a lower profile. Look how many of those fit on there. Okay, now um, another tip I have is that I don't suggest printing 50 models at a time. Now if you can print four, uh, six, eight models on here and get them on the build plate, that's one thing. Uh, but your odd odds of success with 50 different models going from model to model um, it's going to increase your chance of stringing, and if you knock over a single one of these, it's going to turn the whole thing into a gobbledygook mess. So um, try to keep it simple. Uh, I think this is a great illustration of the fact that the multiple models on Kira's build plate are now functioning a lot better. I have 51 models on this build plate, and I'm not having any issues or lag or anything. So. That is amazing. And that's basically it. That's going to wrap it up for our quick look at Kira 4.7. Now, if you've been a trooper and stuck it out to the end of this video, I told you I was going to give you a link that you could check out your own way to win an Ender 3 version 2. That link is right here. Uh, you can go ahead and click on this video, follow the contest rules, and enter the contest. It will take a little bit of effort on your part because nothing is free, but it won't cost you anything, maybe just a few minutes of your time and you might win yourself an Ender 3 version 2. So definitely check that out, and we will see you guys on 3D Thursday. Hit that bell and ring it for notifications to let you know when we post new videos. We do normally post on Thursdays at least some sort of 3D printing video. Uh, every other day of the week is kind of a crapshoot, but I put up videos pretty regularly, although I'm trying to stay consistent on that Thursday thing. So um, some of the things we got coming up are uh, going to be looking at some printers from Easy3D. And, of course, my Ender 3 version 2 will be here soon, so we'll have the unboxing and the review of that. Definitely check it out. Until then, there is a card up here in the corner. This will take you directly to my Ender 3 contest. Um, it's actually going to be in this corner right here and I'd click on that and check that out if I were you well that's it guys that's gonna wrap up this video if you've noticed the shirt the merch is available go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below it won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers and so far I am just about to hit 5,000 so uh, it'll be a little while a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel but they are available now I have a couple other designs feel free to pop over there and check them out and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link. Check out our Patreon link. Leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.